Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom B-Pal Picks Edition. If you'd like to see my non-picks, if you'd just like to see the all-hockey frolic edition today, Monday, and during the week, 3 to 5 Eastern Time, I do live shows. And I do so with some fine, fine talent, such as Professor Joe Borek and John from Off the Wall Hockey, Peyton from Peyton on the Radio. And I'm going to even have more special guests than, no, not more than that. I'm going to have more special guests. The special guests I'm going to have are not more than those, because those are amazing. But they might be more well known than those. That's going to be interesting. Anyways, weekend. On the weekend, I think I was up a unit and a half. <laughs> but that's not bad, actually. From what I'm talking to other cappers right now, and they are really, there's a lot of cappers struggling out there right now. Um, especially with hockey. It is a little bit difficult right now adjusting to road teams not traveling as much, but also having to struggle with uh, being uh, put into uh, rooms together or by themselves. So I'm trying to say they, they have to quarantine themselves while they're before they play changes the whole environment. Um, starting to lean towards more veteran teams a little more now. And we'll see that in our picks here. Uh, by the way, thank you for subscribing and hitting the bell. I got a letter here. I love your letters. Send your letters. Send your letters. Guido goes down to the mailroom every day, brings up a sack. We pour it on the letter table, and Helen, who knits all the Pearls of Wisdom necklaces, which you will get when you subscribe right now, you'll get one. Pearls of Wisdom necklace, pearlocoptered to your door. And uh, the people that do that are Melissa and Hernandez. And we all go around the letter table, and we do the Pearlo dance. You know, you guys do it every morning, right? Like that? That's how you get yourself going in the morning. We do that. So we love your letters. And we got a letter from Felicia Gonzalez from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Awesome. What part of Puerto Rico was that from? Uh, Canyon Hills, Puerto Rico. Thank you. Uh, asking... When, oh, I, I, uh, I subscribed to your channel. I have not yet received my Pearls of Wisdom necklace. Okay, we'll have to look into that. Uh, we'll have to look down the list and see what happens, and I'll write a letter to send back to you. Now, if you haven't received your Pearls of Wisdom necklace, I apologize. Uh, but uh, they're very busy. They're very busy, boys and girls. Yes, they are. Next order of business, um, Parlay Challenge. Par put your parlays down and then their comment section. I have like one guy who's probably, he hasn't hit a parlay yet. Um, I forgot to put his name. Jeez, I forgot to look up his name. Anyways, he hasn't hit a parlay yet. He's the only, I think there's been one or two people that have tried. Uh, he's going to get the free month on page, on our my uh, Patreon channel, my Patreon, BPAL Picks, free premium month. Just for participating, I think. He's going to get it. So give him some competition. Put your parlays down there. And if you hit them, you'll get a chance for a free monthly month subscription of that. So let's go to our picks for oh this weekend. I'm not going to go through every pick this weekend. I'm just going to because I, I don't want to make these too long. I was up a unit, unit and a half. Uh, the one that ticked me off was uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. I picked them that now. I don't know how I missed it, but Rowanski was out. I wouldn't have picked him at Mel there, but I also picked him on the over. What happened a lot was, like Vegas, I, got, I nailed it and I got the over on Vegas yesterday. But many times what I, what's happening is I'm betting, I'm getting the side, but I'm not hitting the line or vice versa. So it's pretty much breaking even all the way through. However, my large play picks are coming through pretty solid. If you go there now, I think I'm hitting 65 to 70% of my large pearls picks. 
And large pearls picks is where all the money is. And that's the ones I'm most happy with. So they should hit a lot. Okay, let's go to games today. Now, Carolina Columbus. All of these games I'm going to give you right now really are subject to goaltending. So you really have to uh, look at goaltending. They are not putting out goaltending till late. The other thing that's been we've been struggling with this cappers is injuries have not been uh, given out till very late, sometimes just before game time. That might have what, what happened with that Rowenski thing, and that drives you crazy as a capper. Um, anyways, we got Carolina at 175 and Columbus at 210. Yesterday, Columbus was at 230, and I liked that juice on the road if Wierenski are at home with if Wierenski was still in because Reimer is in net for Carolina. They have some injuries to Mrazic, injury to Mrazic. Now, they haven't played Nedeljkovic yet, and this is a back-to-back. Nedeljkovic could be in for Carolina. Nedeljkovic is not a great goaltender. Um for sure, I'm looking the over here. What's the over on this? I think it was like 5.5 if I remember correctly. Yeah. Last year, we wouldn't have picked Columbus for overs ever. But they're not. They had a lot of changes. Domi coming in. They made the Dubois trade for Roslovich and Lyonne. They have a lot of teams that are learning Tortorella's system. And it takes a bit to learn. It's... uh. It's, a diff it's different than anything you're going to find anywhere else. And it's starting to be adjustment. Now, also, um, Corpusalo will be in for Columbus. I'm not a Corpusalo fan. That's why I'm leaning the over here. Uh, you're getting 202. Nice juice. I already put this in a Patreon. You could have had this pick this last night if you were over on our Patreon. And uh, I don't know when you're going to get it here or if you're going to get it. But I, um, I really like that pick. Uh, I do like that pick. Uh, Columbus, um, I'm going, now as far as the line is concerned, with Rorensky out and the Delkovic in, like it's really, this is a tough line. This is a really tough line because I, I'm I'm afraid of putting anything on Carolina to win because of the Delkovic. But with Rorensky out in Columbus, it's going to be difficult. I think maybe take Columbus plus What's the spread? 150. Take Columbus plus one and a half and put it in a parlay somewhere. That's what I would think. Talking about that, uh, we'll go down to the New York Islanders and the New York Rangers. Again, nothing has been confirmed here. I'm almost positive, though, that it's going to be Varlamov against Shesterkin. Islanders had some time off, and against the game against Pittsburgh, they started playing, going back to the Islanders system that had faded away from them. Again, this is a team that has had some significant player changes, in more in the sense of who they lost. Uh, they lost Boychuk and they lost Taze over the offseason, and Mayfield's playing probably a little higher than he should be in the lineup. Uh, and uh, they have Dobson in, who is playing well, but they have a lot of players playing higher in the lineup than they probably should. It seems to have really affected them. Also, with Beauvillier also being injured, who is a significant offensive force for the New York Islanders, I'm leaning, if I'm going to lean to anything here, I'm probably going to lean to the total, and I'm going to go under five and a half. Uh, last year, the Islanders were money under five, uh, the, but they have been having, uh, oddly enough, they've been having very difficulties in the defensive end of things this year. But with the uh, time off to practice, showing good, although it did go over, the game did go over, I saw a much better Islanders team against Pittsburgh. I think this will likely be be on the under and I think it'll also likely do maybe see Islanders are the dog here maybe spread this as well take the Islanders on the spread which is only 140 but parlay it with Columbus and that wouldn't be a that would probably be your highest percentage play I would say otherwise I'm sort of leaning the Islanders ML that's what I would say there 
Okay, Edmonton, Ottawa and Edmonton. Right now, it's saying that it's very likely Ottawa will be playing Murray. Now, as of the first couple games, I would have been like, this is over all day. However, the last two or three games, Murray has been turning things around. Or, as I mentioned in my live broadcast, you know, I would I've been saying you know Murray was a terrible move, but I also have a lot I have a lot of faith in Ottawa's coaching goaltender coaches. They've done a lot of good things there with their their goaltenders. Um, so I'm like, so I had said that you know maybe they they must have thought that they could turn they found something in Murray that they had to work with, and it was a little early to see if that wasn't going to be the case or not. It's starting to look like it may be the case. So. I'm, I'm on the shy side of taking the over on this game. However, Smith is in for Edmonton. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be six and a half, isn't it? Yeah, it's six and a half. Six and a half still seems like the high side to me, but I'm really not liking Smith. First game back from quite a while from being injured. Um, what Ottawa just did to Price not too long ago, I think this could be over. And I think Ottawa could keep this tight. You could almost PL this as well. I wouldn't suggest it so much, but if I'm going to do something, I probably would. You're not getting much juice from Edmonton. Last time they played, Edmonton absolutely trounced them. And I think that's very possible that it could happen here again. Um, I'm going to say, like, Edmonton and Reg in regulation. I don't think I would go PL or Ottawa on the spread. And again, what was that? 1.65. Yeah, 1.65 and tie and match that up with something for a parlay probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, because of the goaltender situation, it's a very it's a little difficult to cap. I'm probably going to the best play out of that game is probably the over with Smith and Net and Edmonton's firepower though. Uh Vancouver versus Toronto. Uh Vancouver's just had the uh, most brutal uh schedule ever. It, they really have. It was like 16 games in 20 days or something like that. It's just stupid. People are slamming them quite a bit and they're slamming themselves too. Um, I don't see it changing here. They just, they have to get some rest. And they're playing against just a Toronto team that is absolutely dominant. Now, Demko will be in for Vancouver. I like Demko better than Holtby right now. The question will be, does this go over or not? And um, I'm leaning to the Fossilville. I'm not super bullish on the over at six and a half, to tell you the honest truth. Um, I think Vancouver, uh, Demko could keep it under that. And it's possible Vancouver just does, it's just right, uh, right out of gas and can't score enough. Just like they did last game. They weren't able to score enough. And I had the over on that too. Um, I think this could be under, or they could just mail it in and it could go way over. It's very difficult. It's right on the line at six and a half, I would say. I would take Toronto in regulation though, which pays about 175. That would be my bet. If you want to get like really, if you want to get like really randy, take Toronto on the PL. I think that's somewhere around two. Let's look at the spread. 220. There's a very good chance that they will win by two. It's not a bad bet. Tampa Bay, Nashville. Um, now, there, if you ask the cappers out there, oh, this was at five and a half. Oh, okay, it is still at five and a half. Some places it's six, five and a half. I'll tell you right now, get out there and get it at five and a half if you can find it. Sports, sports interaction, uh, bet online, betway. There's a lot of five and a halves out there. I think I would take it at five and a half. The, the, the line is starting to shift. Because a lot of people are taking the over here. Um, Saros is probably a net. Um, I think Nashville's got enough to pot at least two against uh, Vasilevsky. And Tampa should get four against Saros. Now, you go ask the cappers out there. You're going to find that Tampa does not have a good record in Nashville. But 
That's a Tampa team that's usually playing in Nashville that has fans, for one. Two, a Nashville team that doesn't look like a moral a morale disaster. They look morally done there in Nashville. Um, there is something in there's something amiss completely with Nashville this year. Um, that's been kind of growing in that organization for quite some time. Also, Johansson is out for Nashville as well. That's pretty big up the middle for them. They don't really have much to replace Johansson there. Even though Johansson hasn't been rocking it, uh, neither has anyone else. And they've been less rocking it. So whoever's going to take that center position, who might be Granlin moving over, is not going to be very effective against a Tampa Bay team who's still stacked up the middle. So I'm going with uh, Tampa Bay in regulation and over on that. Arizona versus St. Louis. Um, this is tough because Arizona is, uh, St. Louis is getting outworked by Arizona all day. That's the problem here. St. Louis, man for man, should be able to win here easily. Um, let me just quickly look at the injuries for St. Louis. Okay, Robert Thomas is out. That's not good. Uh, Scandella, Steen, Sanford, Sanford's out. So they're hurt a little bit. They're at home, though. Basically, I think I'm fading this game. If you really have a lean on this yourself, um, I would probably go Arizona PL. Where did my odds? Arizona PL, which isn't giving you much juice. It seems like a PL day. PL and parlay. PL and parlay. PL and parlay. Um, now, Bennington should be in. Huso was in last time. Kemper should be in. This should be an under. This should be an under. I would probably, if I'm going to go anything on this game, it's probably the under, but I would make sure for goaltending. Now, if you're over on my Patreon, what will happen is I will, while you're working and doing what you do, I'll be doing my work, and I'll be updating you on uh, if things happen where players get hurt or goaltenders or whatever the case may be. So... That's one of the fine benefits. Also, what I've started doing over there is I'm giving a, my uh, an in-depth analysis of each game that I bet and saying why I bet it. So you can just see the logic. And also, you can find it here at Pearls of Wisdom Industries on the Pearl of Wisdom channel or um, the Pearl of Wisdom show, as I like to call it. Well, boys and girls... I, oh, I forgot Curtis. This is all about based on Curtis as well. Who? Who uh, did not give me much for picks here? What did he say? New York Islanders, New York Rangers should be Marquis game, but he never really gave me any picks for today. So he's been tired. He's working lots. But that's our full 42%, boys and girls. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell, send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. I'm going to do some Pilates at Chinky's House of Yoga and Pilates right now. And uh, I hope that you uh, have a fine day. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.